You're awesome, And so uh, this is where we started the trek, and here we are, leaving the vehicles, leaving the comfort of civilization. <laughs> yeah, could you just tell us who's on the, who's on the trek? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so this is uh, Brian Bean. He's uh, one of our park neighbors. And the fellow right behind him there is, uh, he, he runs Lava Lake Ranch, which is right down oh, the yeah. um, Fellow right behind him there is Mike Mancuso. He is a botanist. He has a, a botanical consulting business in Boise, Idaho. So he was great to have along because he identified literally every plant that we saw wow. along, the, along the trek. Wow. Uh, and I'll point out a few more. This is Allie Kankowski, and she was a year-long Student Conservation Association intern. And uh, she jumped into every hole that she found. Um, <laughs> she, was, she was like way ahead of the group. <laughs> Um, so she's truly amazing person, uh, athletically and otherwise, um, and is, as far as I know, the only woman to have ever hiked the entire Great Rim. So uh, that first day, we made it up to here. Uh, Strangely enough, we never actually made it to our destination. Um, our park superintendent at the time, Dan Buckley, you'll, you'll see him uh, on one of these other pictures. Um, he kind of uh, set his sights a little too far <laughs> for each day. Uh, so instead, we ended up, instead of camping in these nice kipukas, which are these islands of vegetation, we ended up instead camping in places like this. <laughs> uh, so, you know, right out on the lava itself, um, we did have a few little scrubby juniper trees to uh, set our tents under that night. Uh, but it was, it was pretty cool. The next day we, we did finally make it to one of these kipukas and uh, this one is called Old Juniper Kipuka. And so, like I said, it's just an island of vegetation surrounded by young lava. Uh, these, this tree here, there's three or four trees in a line right here that have been growing at this location for hundreds of years. Uh, the estimate on this tree is that it's about 800 years old. And Literally so huge, you can see Dan, Dan Buckley right there and Brian Bean, they're trying to hug the tree. But they can't quite reach each other because uh, this thing is so enormous. There. So it, it was pretty amazing to see that. Oops. And this is what that uh, kipuka looked like. You can see there's considerably more vegetation there. And you can see the crater that was created by this older lava formation that's surrounded by younger lava. Uh, we continued on to the source of the lava for this particular feature, which is called the Wapai Flow. The Wapai Flow, which you can clearly see on our satellite photo here, this is this, is this feature down here. Uh, this is the youngest shield volcano on the Snake River Plain. Um, shield volcanoes, if you've ever been to Hawaii, you've been to a shield volcano. Shield volcanoes are the most common volcanic feature on the Snake River Plain. This, the Wapai Flow just happens to be the most recent of those. It's only about 2,000 years old. And uh, what you're looking at right there is the actual source of the lava that created that entire volcano. Uh, this is called uh, Pillar Point right here, or Pillar Butte, and that's where the lava issued out and just flowed out uh, over 
several months or years. It was a relatively short period of time that created that entire volcano. And so we climbed up to the top of that. And we also climbed beneath the, the ground and explored a variety of caves. Like I told you, Allie, she was always climbing into everything <laughs> the whole trip. Uh, and this was an especially interesting cave that we went into. It had these long chambers and all kinds of interesting lava formations. Um, and it was, it was pretty neat to see that. Oh, these photographs, by the way, were all taken by a uh, fellow from uh, Bellevue who accompanied uh, our, our trip. His name is Craig Wolfram, a very talented photographer, and, and uh, uh, we were really very happy to have him on the trip as well. So we finally made it off of the Wapai Flow and headed out across what is known as the DLM Monument on this the older sagebrush covered landscape. Before we got there, we went to this feature here, which uh, let me show you on the satellite photo again. So there's basically three lava flows that make up Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve. There's the Wapai flow down here, there's the Craters of the Moon flow. And then there's this one right here, which is called um, King's Bowl, right here. And so that's what this one is right here. It looks tiny on here, but it's quite large when you're standing next to it. And what's interesting about King's Bowl is it's a place where the lava came in contact with groundwater, and it was actually an explosive eruption about 2,000 years ago which created this massive chasm you can see right here. And you can really get a sense here about what the Great Rift is all about because there's this long linear feature that cuts through there. And uh, we've had some very brave cave explorers go down into this crack and they've gone down 400 uh, some people say even 600 feet down into the earth. And so there's a considerable amount of ice and snow uh, that is inside of those cracks. And we actually ventured down into there to melt some of that snow. We spent the night there at King's Bowl. We were also met there by a film crew from Outdoor Idaho, from uh, Idaho Public Television. and. Uh, they filmed us there for a special that they did about Idaho wilderness. <laughs> Next day we uh, took off again ac across uh, the sagebrush and we tried to hitch a ride but nobody ever came by. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Uh, we did continue on to the edge of the Craters of the Moon flow. And we did find, uh, once again, evidence that others had been out there before. This is an old settler's home of some sort, built of lava rock, long abandoned. Um, but it was right on the edge of the lava. And we actually spent the night in kind of a natural corral it's right on the edge of the lava, uh, where they would take the, the cattle or the sheep or whatever they had there uh, and uh, kind of created a na natural corral for them there. And there were some uh, foundations of temporary structures there and, and lots of old barrel casks. I guess they used to bring the water in for the cowboys there. Um, so we spent the night there, right on the edge of the lava. Day four, uh, we ventured up onto the Craters of the Moon lava flow and along the edge. And this is some of the terrain that we traveled across. And uh, yeah, it was pretty challenging, especially again because the wind was blowing so our backpacks became like sails 
And is that the Pioneer Range you can see in the, in the distance in that yeah. photograph? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you're going across some of these big cracks, you can imagine the wind's blowing up. And it's trying to blow you right into those cracks. Yeah. <coughs> across there. there. That's Mike. Uh, we did find a, a little bit of snow in some of the cracks, and we stopped and uh, gathered some of that and melted that down later in the evening and, and so we could uh, replenish our water supplies. Uh, we actually, it was an extremely dry winter actually in 2014, so we actually did cache a little bit of water along the way as well. Uh, so we didn't completely rely upon on the uh, snow that we could find, but we did uh, supplement our water with what we could find along the way. Uh, that night we uh, spent on the edge of the Craters of the Moon flow, and we had a nice sagebrush fire that night, and it got pretty cool that evening. Uh, the next day we hiked out to another Kipuka, and I can show you that on this satellite photo here. This is uh, this little island right here. Um, and we were surprised to see we had some company out there. There was a whole herd of elk out here on this vegetated island on the lava. And it was just amazing to me to see these guys just take off across the lava with no problem whatsoever. It was like, this is how you do it. <laughs> um, and uh, they could easily travel across the lava, no problem at all. Did you find their water source tank? No. They're gonna eat water daily. No, I think they get most of the uh, moisture just from the vegetation. Uh, this was probably one of our bleakest camps. <laughs> so once again, we uh, we didn't make it to our destination. We just <laughs> kind of stopped along the way, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty tough night right there. <laughs> um, day six. Continued on the Craters of the Moon flow. Uh, we checked out a cinder cone that's quite, quite far out on the lava. It's called Coyote Butte. You can see the Pioneer Mountains off in the distance there. Uh, there's Allie showing her uh, going with the flow <laughs> technique. <laughs> It's sort of like uh, dancing on the lava, you know, here. So I'm from one thing to another and just following all of these different creases and flows along the way. And then we made it to uh, a place called Blacktail Butte. And this is a truly spectacular cinder cone that's way south on, uh, on the Great Rift. And there's a, a series of craters that are lined up along the rift. And they lead to this lovely spot right here, which is uh, exactly the same place where Robert Limbert and his folks had camped uh, at one point in time. Um, we've seen photographs of exactly the same area with his crew out there in the 1920s. Um, but you can see this lovely area where we camped. Uh, there's actually a water hole here. And there's also uh, lots of evidence that the Shoshone uh, had, had been out there in that area as well. But uh, this is a very remote place, um, but <coughs> quite, quite worth the effort to, to get out there. And then we uh, continued on from Blacktail Butte, following these spatter cones to the north. And this is the final day, the final big push, which was a long one. 
Uh, along the way, we went through a feature called Vermilion Chasm, which is uh, about a 4,000 year old lava flow. Um, pretty spectacular part of the rift. You can see where all the dripping lava came out and all of those original features. And we followed that to the north. We made it to this cinder cone here, which is called Sheep Trail Butte. And it's a series of craters and lots of cinders and spectacular views from there as well. And finally, we made it to the trailhead with lots of blisters. <laughs> Allie was the first one there, of course. <laughs>